This short video just goes over one small step of refracting with the ferropter, and that is um, refining the axis of cylinder using the Jackson cross cylinder. Okay, this would be done after you have uh, checked the sphere power and narrowed that down a bit, and now you're moving on to the axis and cylinder to refine those a bit. Four major steps. One, you go up a couple lines on the Snellen just to a large and more comfortable line. Two, you flip down the Jackson cross cylinder. Three, refine the axis first. And there are four basic steps to doing that. And four, refine the cylinder power. And another four basic steps to that. Really easy. Let's go over them one by one. Go up a couple of lines on your Snellen chart. That just means, for instance, if you have your patient being 2020 through the ferropter, go up to about 2030. Um, and if they're only seeing 2030, you can go up to 2050 or so. But the point here is you want it to be big enough that it's comfortable for the patient to see. Now go ahead and flip down the Jackson Cross cylinder. Now we're going to refine the axis. The two thumb knobs should line up with the axis. In this case, our patient has a 90 degree axis, so we want our thumb knobs vertical. If we were starting out with another axis, let's say we were starting out at the 180 axis, that, in that case our thumb knobs would line up horizontally. If we were starting out at, let's say, the 135 degree axis, then our thumb knobs would line up diagonally at the 135. Another way of seeing this is the two dots, red and white, should straddle the axis, which can be seen as little white arrows in there. There are two arrows to cross from each other. In this picture, you can only see one, but there's one at the top, too. And the red and white dots are on either side of the arrows. Or in other words, they straddle it. Okay, then we ask, which is better? One, then we flip it using the thumb, thumb knob, or two. So you say to the patient, which is better? One and the white dot is on this side, then you use the thumb knob to flip it, and the white dot will be on this side, and you finish your sentence, or two. Okay, let's go over that again, because I just want to be clear. Because your white dot may start out over here for one, and be here for two, doesn't matter. The point is, it's going to start out on either the left or right, and then once you flip it, it's going to be on the other side. So it doesn't matter which one your one or two is. The point is, it's going to change. Then you're going to turn the axis clock 15 degrees in the direction of the white dot that was chosen. So our patient may respond either one or two. If the patient responds number one was better, we flip to number one and notice that the white dot is on the right hand side. So we're going to turn the axis clock clockwise. So we're going to go 15 degrees in the direction of the white dot. Since the patient answered 1 and the white dot in the first option was to the right, we're going to go 15 degrees to the right. Each one of these lines is spaced 5 degrees apart. So we're going to go from 90 to the right. To 75. That's 15 degrees in the direction of the white dot. And if the patient responds 
number two was better. The white dot in the second option that we gave them, number two, is to the left. So the axis clock will be turned to the left, 15 degrees, counterclockwise. At this point, you should repeat the procedure from where you ended up. Again, ask the patient which is better, one, then flip it, or two, and continue to adjust the axis clock until both options appear the same. Now, once you get near the correct axis, you may be moving the clock less than the 15 degrees. You may be maybe 5 to 7 degrees. But once both options appear the same to the patient, you have refined the axis. And now we move on to refining the cylinder power. And for that, we start with lining up the P's with the axis. And in this case, our axis has remained at 90 degrees. After we've refined it, the patient um, chose 90 degrees as the best axis. If your axis has shifted once you've refined it, then your P's will not line up at 90 degrees. You will line them up according to your new axis. That's why we refine the axis first, so we know where to line up the P's when we begin to refine the cylinder power. And then once again, we will give the patient two options, either side of the uh, cross cylinder. We'll ask the patient which is better, one, and flip the cylinder, or two. And note the color of dots that are directly under the P's. If the patient chooses the side where the white dots are under the P's, you're going to go up a quarter of a diopter in cylinder power. If the patient chooses the side where the red dots are directly under the P's, you're going to go down a quarter of a diopter with your cylinder power. So where we started with this particular patient, we started at a cylinder power of a plus one. And if they choose the option where the white dots are below the P, we're going to rotate the cylinder power dial so that the cylinder power is now 1.25. If they choose the option where the red dots are below the P, we're going to rotate the cylinder power dial so that they now have a cylinder power of 0.75. And lastly, we're going to repeat this until both options, option one and option two, both appear the same for the patient. And that's how you refine the axis and cylinder using the Jackson cross cylinder.